Alright, um, normally I do not show how I'm getting ready to prepare for uh, one of my many creations in the kitchen, but I figured this is an amazing recipe. Let me move some of the ingredients since I was making sure I had everything. These are ambrosia apples. Actually, any type of apple will work, um, but not my honey crisp because I'm sorry, but the honey crisp I will just be for, for eating. Um, this is a recipe I got. It's actually a Paula Dean recipe. It's called Granny Girl's Fresh Apple Cake from Georgia. It takes at least an hour and a half to cook. And actually, I won't go into too much. We'll probably show as far as the cheat cut we use is with the apples. Because apples, chopping up apples finely can actually drive you. And yes, I have candy sitting there to help me through the day while I'm cooking pay no attention um but i do have a tendency to take as many shortcuts as possible because with uh some children namely yay miss tabitha rose clarice my alum, um time is of an essence so i do take advantage of certain cheats i will take a moment um it's orange juice eggs Actually, there's no butter in the cake itself, but when it comes to the glaze, which is an absolutely amazing part of it. Uh, but you have coconut. It calls for pecans, but I usually don't put in the pecans since there's so many people with some allergies. I even try not to do the coconut, except that it adds so much moisture that I do keep that in the recipe. But basically, you've got lots of sugar, eggs, vegetable oil orange juice, uh, the flour, baking soda, salt, cinnamon, vanilla, um, like I said, the finely chopped apples, uh, shredded coconut, and as I said, you can do the pecans, and then we'll go into as far as the glaze when we get to it. Anyway, let me get started on peeling the apples, because that's what takes the most time. Okay, I did want to show something. Let me have Tabitha be the camera woman for a moment. Okay. Um, when I'm coring the apples, one of the, one of the best tricks I've learned is when you're cutting them, then you can just actually take the knife, and if you do it at an angle, look at that, perfectly cored. I'll show you with this one. What I do, because you split it in half, split it into fourths, you lay it on its side, you see the angle that I'm going at? When you do it that way, Look at that, all the seeds, everything taken out. To me, that was one of the nicest tricks I've ever learned when I'm doing apple pie, when I'm doing um, anything that I have to chop apples. And that way, and, and yes, I do not skin my apples first. I know, probably should. But this, at least if I get this out of the way, and I'll show you, I'll move these out of the way, and I will show you with a fresh apple. If you take it, and yes, my nails are naked because I'm getting ready to paint them today, so don't fuss at me. <laughs> Cut it in half again, quarter it. And then when you're laying it on the side, cut at an angle, you completely cord it. Um, to me, this is quicker and a little bit more efficient than actually sitting there. You can buy one of those cores and put it down the center and twist it around and blah, 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 blah. Now, I... I truly don't take a heck of a long time when I'm cooking. Like I said, three kids, household, two dogs, um, multiple, water turtles, multiple birds. multiple birds. We won't get into the bird factor, but there are lots of birds. Um, actually, there's only five. They still have a couple, mostly five now, but we still have two eggs, but I don't know if they'll actually hatch probably, or not. They'll probably, they'll probably take them out of the nest uh, again. Yeah. So that way, you can see, look at that, all of them cord. I mean, to me, that is an amazing, amazingly quick, easy way. Um, some of the recipes, I leave the skins on, depending. A lot of times with um, the apple muffins, there's a good recipe for some apple muffins. Sometimes I leave the skin on some of them when I'm trying to core, uh, go ahead and slice them up. Just because it does give that extra bit of nutrients, plus it gives it a little bit more t uh, flavor. With this recipe, I usually do skin at least half of them. 
and then leave the other half with the skins. I'll see what I want to do, but I want to show you that quick little trick before we continue with anything else. Okay, this is my handy dandy. I love this machine. This is like one of the best investments I think I've ever made. I think it cost me, what, five, seven dollars back oh, many years ago. And I have used it repeatedly for numerous things. For onions that need to be chopped if I don't feel like crying for the next 15 minutes. Alright, go ahead, Miss Tabitha. And you have to have some strength because you push and you push and you push and you push and you push. Come on, girl, you can do it. It's Ah, look at that. This dog's got scared. And this is amazing. Let me show you. Well, I can't do it. One-handed. Ah, Tabitha, help me. I'm helping. Anyway, you can see it from here. You've got nice little chunks. Eh. If you want it smaller, you can always um, cut it even uh, thinner when you go to put them in there. It is a wonderful device to sit there and make them very uniform and quick, easy. I'm telling you, we love quick and easy. Uh, okay, so one more time. Like I said, I usually leave the skin on at least a few of them. It adds a little bit more flavor. Push, girl, push. You can do it. CPR. CPR. Yay, you saved the patient. Broke every rib, but you saved the patient. <laughs> And as you see, they're wonderful. And here, all that. Ah, that's better. Look at that. Wonderful. Completely diced. Chopped. And this works well too. Um, I do have a mandolin that I use as far as when I want to shred something. I uh, even use the food processor if I'm making hash browns with the potatoes. But for the apples, this <laughs> this is the way to go. Um, so we've got to work and work these apples and get four cups of apple shreds or apple pieces I should say. I did want to All show right. you as far as the pans are concerned. I use a typical angel food kit pan. When I get to the sauce it will make a lot more sense why I choose that. Um, bun cakes I, I love this. This is like one of my most favorite pans to do a bun cake because it turns out so dramatic in the end. But when I do the glaze it's very important to do it like as soon as it comes out of the oven and when you pour it on here it will be on the top as opposed to if you pour it on here and then flip it out it's going to be on the bottom. So okay, that will make more sense later We decided later to do another helpful hint. And normally I have no problems cracking eggs but some people do and my advice before you just go over here and crack them straight into your ingredients, take two seconds. Crack the egg into a container, make sure there's no shells, then add it to that. Because otherwise, trying to scoop egg shells out of sugar, not so easy. It's just like but, finding a needle in a uh, hay pen. The, the hay pen, haystack. Good. Whatever. Whatever. Same difference. So, have a tendency to crack the egg, and then now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show off a bit. Because now let's see if this actually works. I can usually do this one-handed. I have to do it two-handed. Um, but most people can do it two-handed, but anyway. So, and I just make sure that there's no eggshells, and then I can go ahead and add it in there. But like I said, most people use the two hands, and then invariably, you know what, life happens. Sometimes there's get all that albumin. Albumin is a wonderful thing when you're cooking. And that's the protein. It's wonderful for the making. <laughs> it is slimy. Okay, so we look real quick. Nope, no eggshells. Good job. So throw that one in. Takes a lot of sugar and a lot of eggs. All right, so one more egg. As I said, crack it. Get it in there. And people, you know what? A little eggshell is not going to hurt anything. But at least this cuts down like on massive quantities of eggshells, which I truly sometimes have had humongous amounts of eggshells. So this one step, yes, it's another dish to clean, but come on people, everybody has dishwashers nowadays, and if not, 
If you're like me, I enjoy washing the dishes in front of the sink and gives me time to think about life and just happiness and looking out over top of the pool, which is really, really nice when it's full. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, it's not full right now, is it? Okay, so let's go ahead and put egg number three in there. But that was just another helpful hint. And I've already seen it 10,000 other times, but it's never too bad to have one oh, more reminder. Oh, it's going all over the place. <laughs> do it slow, dude. It is slow. It's the slowest. Okay, do it on one. How about you put it on one? Yeah. It's only it's on two. Okay. On. Well, and all we're doing is mixing this up. I like to combine it a little bit. Oh, let me... And then we'll start adding as far as the flavor and all this other stuff. I like to make sure that those eggs are really well beaten. I don't want it fluffy, um, but I do want it beaten. No, 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 no. Just add the flour and all the other ingredients. And now Tap is doing a little bit of the coconut. And she knows a little bit at a time. And she puts her fingers near those batters. I'll probably kill her again, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, She's been cooking since she was two years old, so I really don't worry so much about her, um, trust me. Uh, but if people are teaching their children for the first time, please remind them to turn off the mixer, add a little bit of the ingredients, and turn it back on. That way you won't risk them getting their hair, their fingers, their hands, their toys, whatever. Whatever they're holding. Whatever, whatever they're holding in their hands. Um, but like I said, Tabitha actually has been cooking bacon since she was two years old. Yay, bacon! <laughs> um, this recipe doesn't ask for bacon. I do make a bacon chocolate chip cookie that uh, I don't particularly care for because I like my bacon salty, not so much uh, sweet. I am I'm more of a, and I want something sweet, I want something sweet, and if I want something salty, I want something salty. But combined is not usually one of my best. Not sweet and salty. Not sweet and salty. Not usually. Anyway, um, we're getting ready to add the apples in just one minute. Also, we can never make it through the coconut Okay, stick. now we're starting to add some of the apples. Like I said, it is... How many cups did I say? Four cups of apples. Um, you go ahead and put in a bunch of them. Just about a third of them or even a fourth of them. Eh, my hand. Ooh, it means I have to lick it. Ah! <laughs> mm. Uh, yes, don't eat raw batter, but <laughs> yeah, I do. All right, put some more in. Dig it in, girl. Dig it in. Go ahead. Oh, God, that batter tastes so good. Not all of it. Not all of it. Not all of it. All right, go ahead and mix that up. I'll hold the apple apples. Apple apples? Apple apples. Since they're not honey crisp. Oh my goodness, if you could smell this between the cinnamon, the sugar, oh, apples. All right, so we go ahead and pause it again, lift it up, pause. get it up, pause, pause, as in the animals now. <laughs> um, I would say do it from this side since, yeah, I'm a little, my hand. I'm, oh, wow, I'm glad I'm not showing that. All right. <laughs> Uh, whoa! Yeah, that's what I do. I am not the neat. I know it's like the dogs love watching me. Maxwell's behind me, isn't he? Yeah. He's wait. Oh my goodness! Look at that. that is. And oh, I wonder. No, this, this recipe is really good enough. I mean, I do add a little extra cinnamon. I do admit, I add a little extra apple. Do you add a little extra salt? Extra salt. salt. Yes. Do I, you add a little extra vanilla. I do add a little extra vanilla because you add a lot of sugar. <laughs> well, not well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I do have a tendency that no matter what the recipe is, I, I have to twix it. It, it, it tweak it a little bit because. You know, I've been a cook. My, my mother started um, having me cook before. Well, actually, I was walking at nine months, but I swear to God, I was in the kitchen with her. I was measuring. This is one of the best tools to teach children as far as measuring helps you with fractions. Um, sometimes we would just double a recipe simply to 
see how your brain could work as far as fractions are concerned. And seeing that all three of my kids so far have excelled dramatically <laughs> in math. Yay, go Tabitha with reaching probably governor's school in the next, well, for middle school, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Um, and now we are done mixing. And the only thing left is to get it into the pan and into the oven. Which, like I said, it takes about an hour and a half to cook. And then we'll show you as far as um, the sauce, which is really the best okay, part. Okay, so now, oops, sorry about that. Um, we are working on the sauce that goes over top of the, as you see, the cake has finished cooking, like I said, about an hour and a half. Uh, make sure that it comes out, you know, put a knife in it and make sure it comes out clean and you're done. Um, yes, I, oh, I still use that method. And if you can tell, this is getting really quite frothy. And this is butter, sugar, oh, I got it, babe. Um, butter, sugar, buttermilk, which I always, uh, I don't carry buttermilk usually at home. None of us drink it. So what we wind up doing is that wonderful handy dandy trick of putting a little bit of vinegar in with the, the milk and that turns it into, or it turns it into the buttermilk, which is a great substitution. So now what we're doing, and this also has a little bit of baking soda in it too, which uh, I love the chemical reaction that the baking soda does when I do peanut brittle, when I make that from scratch. Uh, it, it really is amazing. So we're waiting for it to boil and boil frantically. And then we will pour it all over it and it gives this wonderful, amazing glaze and soaks down into the the cake itself. It looks so good. I know, and it smells so good. Mm, yum, yum. <laughs> and as I said before, you can use, um, I did put coconut in it, but I don't routinely do the pecans. Since so many people do have nut allergies, I just, you know, if I do decide to take this to work, and yes, I probably will, people, I'll at least bring half of it to work. Because it is exceedingly rich and it's hard to um, well it's not really difficult to eat the whole thing but you really shouldn't eat the whole thing <laughs> so I am waiting for this to come to a rolling boil so then we can you basically boil it for about a minute once it gets going of course now that I'm watching it it probably won't boil just because. So we're hoping. Come on, come on. La 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 la. Lots of butter, lots of sugar, buttermilk. All right. Let me see if it's going to do its thing. So you need to keep it from burning on the bottom so it's important to keep it moving just a little bit quicker than normal and it is going to go quite happy in a moment because I don't want it scorched on the bottom it will be here you go, Miss Tab. You want to videotape it while I'm finishing up? It's only going to be about one more second. Well, not one more second, but. You know, I know. That is getting right to that point. Ooh, I see it steaming. Yeah. Because the whole point of the chemical, I mean, of the. Um, As you see, it is boiling, point. boiling. And quite literally, you pour it over. That's a wonderful, and it will, trust me, it will sink in, so don't worry, just take your time so it doesn't wind up overrunning, 
and then let it set and usually um, it's about an hour that you're going to need to let it set and finish soaking in and then I'll show you okay, a little bit so the finished here we have the finished product after you let it set for a little bit and then you take it out of the holder and I am telling you um, Tabitha and I were discussing as far as it's so good it will make you smack your mama and she smacked me when she tasted it so apparently it is that good but uh, truly except for the amount of time that it takes to cook it is well worth every bit of effort um, it really doesn't take that long to fix up anyway I hope you enjoyed this video please leave a like leave a comment and subscribe please 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 we have food video games orchids um, we are a multi-talented family anyway talk to you later thanks bye